Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be doing my AFL Fantasy Round 8 review, is it? Yes, I believe it's Round 8, yeah. Round 8 review, going through how well my players did, who's uh, a possible trade out, and how I'm looking to move forward from here, especially now as we start to consider buy structure. So before we get into the video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the video. So as you can see here, um, make this a little bit bigger for you guys, I always do this. Um, I scored 24.42, uh, team value is at 19.9 now, it's okay, it's now, okay, it was... 19.1 uh, going into the round. It's now closer to, I think it's 19.92 or close enough. Uh, round rank of 15.57, so a really good um, round. And then also uh, an increase in my overall rank to, uh, well, a decrease in it to um, 8.806 from that of 15.465. Uh, so that's what... 6,600 odd again, is it? 6,600? Yeah, 6,660 odd. So that's uh, really good. And yeah, we'll start from the top. So Nick Dacos, 84. Um, knew this was going to happen. That's why I didn't want to tag him. A 114 average still is amazing and is a clear D1 at this point. And the only way he's going to get slowed down is a tag. And the two games he's really got tagged in well enough. He's gone 84 and 99. So... Um, he came back well in the last quarter, had like 10 touches or 7, 10 touches in the last quarter, including 7 in the last 4 minutes to really get, I think it was like he went from 60 or like 60, low 60s to 84 in the space of like um, red time. So really did well. Um, Tom Stewart had a bad end to the game, but still got 88 and he's looking like a sort of D6 type of guy. So um, hoping to see him bounce back against Richmond. He has Richmond, Fremantle, GWS, and then Western Bulldogs into the buy, so that should really help him. And 88 is pretty good compared to some other scores that we saw. Um, but yeah, I'm really just at the moment getting killed by the likes of Dawson, so I may look at trying to get him in, but there's also a problem that I'm sort of I don't have enough cash at the moment to be able to upgrade and get another rookie off field and get another massive premium. So it's about trying to find the right um, 600, 700k guy to get. Uh, we have Will Day here, 85, a little bit down, but I mean, he was playing what, Geelong, I'm pretty sure. No, he was playing Frio. So 85 against Frio in a tough loss. Um, so yeah, he just wasn't on it, but I'm not too worried because his ownership is 35%, so it doesn't really matter too much, and he still made 85, and that's what his low of the season, so I'm not too worried, has Melbourne next week, and I think he can do really well against them, McPherson, 102, really happy with him, and this is the reason why I brought him in, as with Weller out again next week, he plays West Coast, where he might just kick it around the back, honestly, against them, and really rack it up, so hoping for that, um, Duggan, yeah, he's gone into the midfield now, so 44% CBA is last week, I'm pretty sure, meant that it really helped him get his score up, and I mean, he's now gone in his last three and gone an average 92 and um, last five he's gone an average 93. So yeah, he's doing pretty good and holding on to a spot at the moment. I could look to upgrade him, but um, I'm more in the situation now with the role Duggan's got at the moment that I would like to upgrade um, other areas and um, Duggan can be upgraded upon through just a simple Lockie Cowan or something like that to get um, to get up to someone huge, to get up to like an 850 type of defender. And then I did a quick trade in with Rory Aitken off on the Saturday morning because of Wilmot's low score, and that really seemed to work well as there was no one else in that price range that I could really get. And Aitken... Um, He's, he's gone up 61k, and if we look at AFL break evens, um, and we go down here to Aitken, not that one, not that one, this one, minus two break evens. So if you, and he was gonna he's gonna play this week at least, probably might even get a week after that as well. So two more weeks with basically a zero break even means that if he scores a 
scores two sixties, I suspect his price to go up towards five fifty. But if he scores two eighties, that could go up towards six hundred k, and then we're literally just I could use um, Samson Ryan to upgrade him to a uh, premium, like a full on premium premium, or I can use like I was saying with um, Duggan. I can almost use just a 350 to 400k guy and get him up to another pretty good, um, uh, like underpriced, undervalued type guy. Uh, Will Mop 34, that's why I ended up um, swooping and going for Aitken as, yeah, 34. And I think he's going to be one of the rookies that I think on my Twitter I was posting earlier today that um, really this week is about picking the right rookies that aren't going to hit their break even and um, flipping them onto a smaller rookie and getting either an on-field guy in or banking cash this week and being able to make a play the next week. So um, it is a case where I just roll over and um, get two rookies again and start the cash gen process by getting rid of Philippu, getting rid of um, getting rid of Davy and trying to regen that like cash gen over and bank some cash and then being able to make a big play the next week. That is a play that I've considered. Um, and I think Wilmot's going to hold just because I believe his break even. I want to say it's 48. I want to say it's yeah, it's 48. And that's around his average. It's just the problem that um, Philippu's averaging 52. And um, he's got Adelaide next. And I need to see the splits. Like, I need to do more research before I... Um, before I decide who I'm trading out, but um, it's basically between Wilmot, Cowan, um, Philippou, and Davey, and trying to find that, unless, um, and it'll be two of those, unless we see the resting of Ashcroft, which could have a major play in it. I could have a major, major play in the Ashcroft trade, as he will be getting rid of one of the guys on field in round 12, leaving me with if I go back to my notes, I had it up here a second ago, it'll leave me with three, two guys, uh, sorry, three premiums, out and out premiums in round 12, and I could look to um, get another guy in round 12, um, or I could look at the later rounds and get an eighth premium in round 15 or a fifth in round um, 14, and um, for reference, um, the guys that I'm thinking of are Mills, Brayshaw from Frio. Uh, I mean, we can just literally do this. Uh, we can go 800k um, and last round, and you'll see Shera, Mills, um, 900, I mean, Brayshaw's 900k, isn't he? Um, Brayshaw, I mean, Anderson could be, but I've already got Aitken and McPherson from that buy round, so he could be a play because he will certainly score well, um, and that'll leave me with four guys in that buy round, but Aitken will be gone by then, so it'll be three guys. So Aitken, I'm looking probably almost to be able to flip around um, around his buy and actually be... Um, uh, he might be one of the awkward ones where I decide whether do I want to have another... Do I want to go for a premium in round 15 for a couple of weeks and then flip him back down, or do I want to go for around 14 for like two or three weeks, and then flip him down to a uh, brace or etc. It's all about getting that um, maximum scoring in the buy and maximum premiums on field that you can get. So that's basically the defense. Uh, Cowan hasn't played in a couple of weeks, and I don't expect him to come back anytime soon. Um, then we move on to the midfield, and Petrarca was pretty disappointing. Lowest score of the year by... Um, 10 points and um, has Hawthorne next week so really really um, good fixture coming up and I'm hoping he can go bang against them I mean if we look at uh, DFS Australia and then we look at um, player summaries I'll go to Petrarca I'm pretty sure he does well against like Hawthorne and um, he won't be tagged against them or at least he shouldn't so he won't cop a tag unless they double tag in the centre um, and we look here, opponents, um, we look Hawthorne, his max is 111 and uh, average is 77, so he's actually his tied worst average team, which is not a good sign, um, but Hawthorne are leaking major, major points, so if we look at, uh, where is it, it's this one, isn't it, 
and then um, Hawthorne in the mid in the rucks minus sixteen inside mids is plus four and key forwards doesn't really matter wing defence um, and then we look at last five because this will give us a better picture and you'll see here Hawks again plus uh, five point six five so they are very good and whoever's who did we say was playing West Coast uh, let's just check uh, Gold Coast so Gold Coast do you want any um, anyone across the board, basically, especially in the ruck department. Um, so, yeah, that's really, really um, why I think Petrarch is still a good pick, 107 average. I mean, 107 average with an 80 in there is still good. Um, Bontempelli, 107 average. So, yeah, these two are pretty much doing what I thought they would do. And, um, yeah, it's going to come... With these two, there's going to be annoying games where they make where they score 90 or so, but there's also going to be games where they go absolutely huge, and we've seen Bont go pretty huge in his last five. I mean, his last five is 115, and last three, 122, so that's good enough. And then we have Tom Green, who is literally tearing up the comp at the moment and is second top for um, points, and I'm just happy I brought it. Did I, bring, did I have him round one? I'm pretty sure I had him, yeah. I had him round one. I had memories i had whitfield round one as well so um tom green's been there from the start for me and gotten all his um points uh for me and yeah just amazing and then i had this situation here where what did i do first i did the um i had to do um i wanted to do um i saw holland score 86 and i was going to take that so i'm pretty sure i put noah long on to take that score because I knew his buy, um, his game was coming on um, early Saturday, so I wanted to take that score. So that's why it would have been Noah Long coming in first. So that's why you see the emergency here. And then I thought I screwed it up at the end of the game because I took Tur- I was going to take Toronto's score, but I saw Yuland hit Yuland, and I was like, oh, the double emergency. I didn't know how to get Rosie in, but um, ended up being able to get him in. And um, yeah, got the emergency there for a 96 from Rosie so that worked out um emergencies really worked out for me this week and um yeah that's that with these two worked really well Hollands is just going to stay in my side at the moment with the way that the Carlton use their um wings it's really advantageous at the moment I mean his last five is uh 66 last three of 76 so that's enough 76 is around 600k or so so he's trending towards that um, Rosine 96 um, did get outdone by Butters, but no injury concerns from him and a little minor corky from Butters, so I'm still happy picking him. And last three, 104, I mean, he's going to bounce back sometime soon and put up a big number. Could it be this week against, um, who does he have, North Melbourne? I think it could be. And he's also got this pretty kind fixture into the buy of North Melbourne, North Melbourne, Melbourne is a tough game. Richmond, but it is at Adelaide. Uh, Richmond, Hawthorne, Western Bulldogs, and then the tough game of um, Geelong. And I'm just wondering, can I maybe... um, Who has... When do they have their bye? Because I'm wondering, now just looking at it here, this is probably going to be a long video. Uh, All prices, last round, average. Who's got the best forward, best forward... Um, by then we might have gone in the forward line. So I'm wondering if I can do a swing here. Oh, they have the round 14. That's going to be annoying. Um, of, but uh, Rosie might actually be my, um, player that I take out my, pre- one of the premiums that I get rid of in round, after round, uh, 14, because it'll be his buy round. And then I can swing him to the likes of, uh, um, as a, they have round 15, don't they? Yep. Uh, they have round 15. Um, Shaman, I'm not looking at. Um, all prices forward. Do I have any other guys that I can chuck forward? Um, doesn't look like it. McPherson can go forward. Um, so Rosie can go into the midfield, can stay in the midfield um, position, meaning that I can get a Sarong or a Brayshaw or someone else in for Rosie at that time. And I think that'll be a play as I think um, coming out of the bye, they have Essendon. Um, Suns, etc. And um, but I also don't like this this game here, this round fourteen here. So um, that's that's the problem, and I want to potentially get rid of him um, then. So it might mean trading him out in round thirteen, um, after the Hawks game and then against Western Bulldogs and getting rid of him there. Um, now we move to uh Warple here seventy eight, a little bit of a down game, but um. 
coming to the end with him, but also he's still making cash. So, uh, what's his break even? Warpool's break even is 72, so that's fine at the moment. Um, and he comes against Melbourne, where it's going to be a contested game. And then he has West, West Coast, where he could easily rack it up. Um, and then St Kilda, where they seem to be playing an uncontested game. So maybe you want him out there. Um, but that's going to be a struggle as... what is he around 15 by? Or is he around... He's around 14, isn't he? So maybe you trade him out for another round 14 there, or like a Shera or something like that. Um, Ashcroft potentially gets rested, and that's the hiccup in all of my plans at the moment with him. As um, if he does get rested, um, then I need to find another round 12 by, to be honest. Or oh, round 14. Chin Cotter's still going strong. Uh, Noah Long here going. He, he should be back soon. And then onto the Ruckman here, you've got Marshall. Uh, 83 got rested in the last little bit, last of that quarter. That's why you saw 67% game time. And he should be back next um, next week. He's no injury report issues, so he'll be back. And then Tim English went huge, top player in the game at the moment, and uh, 151, and I'm pretty sure he's top priced at the, as well at 1.04 million. And then you have the likes of Samson Ryan here just pumping out cash. Again, another 51k and 204 for the season gained. And then you come on to the forward line. Basically, um, if I had Rosie here and um, and then Aitken, say, in the middle and, um, and Mitchell in the uh, back line, I think this would be a really good forward line, to be honest. Uh, 172, uh, 117, 161, 98, 168, and uh, 96. That would be something close to, I think, 900 points I would have gained from this team. Or the max I could have gained from this forward line if I had all my guys in the best position was something like 950 points. So that would have been huge. Um, so Dunkley, 172, just absolutely went huge and back to his um, F1 potential. Then you have Toronto here. Um, just continuing on, good VC option to get the bank the points in because a lot of people stuffed that up and got a steal or Marshall or day cost points um, and just happy to get the 117. Yes, I did leak points with a Dunkley VC, but um, yeah, doesn't matter in the end. Um, I'm happy that I didn't get burnt, but disappointed that I didn't um, go big with it. But um, if you stick to your motto, you're not going to get burnt at least and, um, you know, There'll be times where other people get burnt, and you're just happy about that. Uh, Golden 161, huge again, and back into that um, top six forward spots. And Sheasel 98 didn't get the hundred because he didn't run out of the goal two times for kickouts. So um, still season rank of 18 as a rookie is huge. Um, gained almost 500k, and I'm pretty sure his break even now is 80 odd. I won't check it. I'm pretty sure it's around there. Um, so yeah, just keep on going for him. Zebul for so much for um, scaring us with potentially being out about three or four hours before kickoff or first bounce. Um, scored one sixty eight was on one hundred and like four at half time or something, and yeah, just absolutely ridiculous pig behavior. Eighteen marks. So um, he comes against Ports, who that'll be a tough game for him to score, I think. But then has the Swans. Um, who he could easily do really well against. And then he comes against the Pies, and if they take, if North Melbourne take any of the approach that the Swans did, he's in for massive numbers there. And then Don's uh, Giants and Bulldogs. And then we come to Seamus Mitchell. I want to get him off field, um, because not just because... He's got a um, he's got um, sub risk, very very big sub risk with Jar um, Scrimshaw, um, Hardwick, etc. There's so many of those ball playing um, halfbacks. So I want to get him off the ground, but I still want to keep him because his cash gen is amazing at the moment. I mean, he went up 36k and has a break even of like 17. So if he gets another 60 score, he goes up again by another 40k, and I could easily see him getting toward, towards that 450k mark. I think that's about his. Um, top out so yeah just got to get him off field for like a Will Powell or something like that and hope um, that Will Powell goes huge Philippu 66 um, probably going to be traded out just because I want the cash to be able to make some big moves so probably does get sacrificed with a lower break oh his break even is like 50 so it's not too bad and then Alan Davies probably has to go just because he's not hitting his break even and then Chester should be back sometime soon and hopefully he gets a better role 
And, I mean, if he comes back this week, he could easily put on 45, 50 per week and get up towards that 300k and give us some more cash gen. I mean, what's his... I'm guessing he's probably 60% owned. Yeah, 60% owned. So he's going down in ownership. But I think a lot of people are using him as their um, captaincy option if they need to loophole. So that's the team at the moment. And um, yeah, trades went really well. I mean, 75 and 60 from these two. So that was 135. And I put in... 188 and I basically actually gained cash I'm pretty sure out of it as minus 17k from those two and um, so I gained 116k in cash change from those guys as well as I'm pretty sure I banked like 16k so in one round I gained like 50 points 170k so yeah huge and these guys are better for the future and these guys seem to be stalling and going backwards so that's great and that's the review there. So plans this week are, of, as I said, the um, get some rookies off the ground. I mean, I'll give you guys a sneak preview of it. So yeah, um, I'm roughly around 19.2 million uh, team value. And um, trades this week are at the moment these, but probably will change. Um, as I said, these guys um, will change probably on team news. As um, if I just do... Uh, this one here, and I go back and I look all players, um, players I can afford. There isn't really much I can do. I mean, could I risk it with a Dom Sheed? I could. Um, do I want to risk it with him? Absolutely not. So, um, but Dom Sheed could be one that you could risk it on. I'm not going to though. I mean, what's his break even? Uh, Sheed. Break even a 54, so he is going to make some cash and does have the round 14 buy, which is favorable. I mean, he is averaging 84, so I could go for that, but um, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, he does have a really good run as well, so um, that could be a decision. Not going Stocker, not going any of these guys. So him and Powell are basically the two guys I'm considering don't like Joneses. Um, and yeah, that basically is it, I think. I mean, look at last three, and you'll see Pal uh, Fiorini is also there in the in the mix. Um, Perriman, no thank you, because he had one good score. And yeah, that's basically it. Hunt is way too late now, looking at it. Um, so yeah, there's there's not many guys here that I can really look at. Joe Hannison, I could jump on. Uh, where was he? Joe Hannison here, 92, 82 in the last three. Um, and I could jump on him. I mean, what's he going to go probably? He does have a good good run into the buy, so I could jump on him. But, um, so yeah, there's there's three guys here that, there's four or five guys that i got to choose out of in this 600k, and i got to choose the best one, basically. And that's it. So I'll, that's the video there, a long, long video, because I uh, needed to get um, all the options out. So um, I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.